Salutations, my name is Summer and this is Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats and I want to do my October TBR and this, do I have, yeah I have it, okay, <laughs> this October I'm really going to try to stick to my TBR. I am so horrible at getting distracted by other books, by starting a book and then setting it aside. So, I bought a journal just for, and it's super cute. Maybe it'll remind me I need to do yoga too. Anyway, super cute. I bought it just for my October TBR. So, I'm writing down my TBR. A couple maybes because I have to be gentle with myself. And then on the back page, I'm going, which you guys can't see this because of the, the light, but on the back of the TBR, I'm going to write the books that I read in October. So that way it'll be so easy for me to see what I have on my TBR and what am I actually finishing reading. So that's a plan. I have to figure out how my mind works and play this game. So hopefully uh, it'll work out this month. The first thing I want to talk about is I went, there's a little thrift shop near me. And for some reason, all these years, I never knew it had books in it. Anyway, uh, the novel is Staggerford, Staggerford by John Hassler. I had never heard of this before. But all the reviews on the back and even up top on the front, everything it says is building this book up in a huge way. So an absolutely smashing first novel. You'll remember it for a long, long time. And what it says on the back, it says, maybe a novel about a 35 year old bachelor who teaches in a high school in a small town in Minnesota and lodges placidly with a spinster who has taught for 41 years in a Catholic grade school doesn't sound very compelling. But if you miss it, you'll be missing one of the year's truly freshly conceived and carried out novels, one whose not always so gentle ironies address themselves in a broader range of life than is to be found in Staggerford, Minnesota. <laughs> Even on the front, a writer good enough to restore your faith in fiction is what the New York uh, Times said. And... Uh, the highly acclaimed story of a week in the life of a small town and of one man who lives there. It sounds, <laughs> I don't know, I love slow reads. I have no idea, I mean, besides what I read on the back. So yeah, I picked this up. It's maybe a gem, I don't know. One of my goals this year was to reread all of Anne Rice's novels. There's, a ver there's very few that I haven't already read. I started reading them when I was 14. And so anyway, I, that's what I've been doing this year. And I think I've only read maybe five. And I was wanting to do one a month. So I'm, I'm behind on that. But one I want to get back to because I'm only on page 14 is The Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice. So I'm hoping to get back into that goal. It's interesting. Um rereading something that I read when I was a teenager, a young teenager. So I've been enjoying it. Let's see. I got to get Mayfair off of my stack. <laughs> One I'm super excited about, but I, I hope I can wait until around Halloween to read it is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. I have no idea what this is about, but it's Agatha Christie. <clears throat> and that cover I'm in love with. So uh, somebody else who's a reread, and I want to, um, uh -uh. just trying to get my tea. <clears throat> All right, maybe I'll set it over here. A, a reread, and I want to read something new also. Uh, that is <clears throat> Edgar Allan Poe, who I started reading very young. I remember in fifth grade, uh, in school, they played the audio of The Pit and the Pendulum, and I had never experienced anything like that before. And I just automatically fell in love. I, a lot of people fell in love with The Raven first. Look at this beautiful edition. 
with the it's so hard to see because it's so bright it's early morning but in the print the print is wonderful there's footnotes there's and there's a ribbon I have it hidden because I haven't started reading out of this edition yet because the cats but yeah it has a, a ribbon that matches it's gorgeous and I got this at Ollie's for maybe $3.99 so yeah this is the one that I usually read out of um, this edition and I've had it since I was maybe 11 years old <laughs> and I was just looking through it because it's been a while since I've read some Edgar Allan Poe but I was like oh, the yellowed pages I was looking through it and I wrote all over in this sucker and and after at the end of the forward I wrote I could have wrote a better forward than you. You suck. <laughs> I told you I was 11 when I got this, and that's probably how old I was when I wrote that. I haven't reread the forward to find out why I disliked it so much, but a child's mind, who knows? I want to reread Berenice, and I want to reread The Pit and the Pendulum because it was my first love with Edgar Allan Poe. And then there's one that I want to read. I don't know if I set it. Maybe I set it where I want to. No. No, I didn't. But it's the narrative. Sorry, I should have already had this marked instead of having you guys wait on me. The narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. I've never read that, and I want to. So hopefully I'll get to those three this month. Also, I want to read Vineland, Vineland um, by Thomas Pynchon. I don't know what this is about because I stopped listening. I was watching Noah, and I'm going to forget. His, my, my, all those that read it must converse, or those that read it, all, I forget. I'll put his channel. I'll put his channel information down below because he did a whole thing on Thomas Pynchon. So I don't know what this is really about. But I am going to experience his writing this month. Another one that I have set aside for quite a while is Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel. I read Wolf Hall a couple of years ago. I love anything that has to do with Henry VIII. And I don't know why. Because he, he did. I don't know. I was going to say he doesn't seem like a likable character. But then again, he does. He seems like he had a lot of charisma. Because you, when you read about him, people were just, it seemed like he was magnetic, that people would just gravitate to him, even though, and I do believe that he had a head trauma when he had that accident, and that changed his personality. Plus, he was probably spoiled, and, you know, when you live a, a type of lifestyle, and you're this big, strong man, because he was like 6'3", and then all of a sudden you can't do what you want to do, and you lose your stamina, you know, that can affect your personality, too. I think he was horrible with, it, horrible with his wives, all, all of them. I've read about all of them. And, and, and a lot of the decisions he made were horrible. But I, I'm still fascinated by him. Another book I didn't get to last month that I went to because I, I enjoy, I just enjoyed the first five. And I feel like when I pick this up, I will just fly through it like I did the other five. Uh, Lock and Key, this is the sixth book. It's by Joe Hill and it is, um, shoot, I want to say narrated. The artwork, I can't even think about what that's called. It's by Gabriel Rodriguez. So, and I, I enjoy these so much. So, and it feels like a Halloween, Halloween, an October read. So, okay, there's all that. I'll tell you what I'm currently reading still. Bless Me Altima by Rudolfo Anya. I really should look up how to pronounce his last name since I have probably said it wrong so many times because this has been on my TBR for the past couple months. Um, but yeah, I'm only on page 26. Last night I really wanted to get into it. I thought, oh, it'll be perfect. It was like nine o'clock and I thought I can really get into this and have a couple of hours because I'm off today. I didn't have to get up early. And they were doing something in town 
they were having a live concert or something. And so it was so loud. I read the third, I read a page three, or not page, I read a sentence three times. And even though it was a beautiful sentence, I thought, I cannot do this. So I watched, I started watching the second season of Alphas. <clears throat> I'm also still reading uh, Survival. It's the first book. It's the Species Imperative. That's the, the uh, trilogy, I guess that's what it's called. So yeah, Survival by Julie E. Ternetta. So I'm still reading this. I'm 300 pages in. I have like 180 pages left of it. I'm really enjoying it. And you can tell this is the first book. It's, um, you know, it's just setting, setting up. You're learning, you're learning about things. So not really much of too much has happened. I'm still also reading War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. If I keep at this pace, I'll be finishing this in November. <laughs> I don't know what October brings. I'm really enjoying it. But when I did the math, I was only reading maybe seven pages, estimating like seven pages a day, a night, I should say. So um, hopefully this month I'll, I'll read more than that. But I'm not putting any pressure on myself and I am really enjoying it. I'm so glad I picked it back up and started over. Okay, so that's 10 books that I want those to be my main priority. I have four maybes. So the first one I don't have because it's Dirt Music by Tim Winton. If that book comes in because I ordered it, um, from Book Depository, if that, if and when that book comes in, because it could be three weeks, it could, you know, it could go into November, but when it comes in, I am reading that sucker. I saw a preview for the trailer. It looks so good. So I'm super excited about that. So you'll see that on my weekly reading that I do if it comes in. Another book, okay, so these are my, that was one of my four maybes. Another one is not a tale of two cities. Uh, Great expectations by Charles Dickens. I'd really like to read this so that way I can say I participated a tiny bit in Victober. Um, and yeah, Great Expectations starts here. So I love this. I love this edition that has both of the books, and I have read a tale of two cities. So that's one that I. Hope to get to, but no promises. Another one is I got this, I just got this yesterday from the library, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I have never read Riley Sager. I want to say, I, I saw this where everybody was talking about this on book two, but I didn't pay too much attention because I like to go into books blind. That's why I'm not really telling you anything about these books is because I usually don't know what I'm getting myself into. And I love that. But I have heard people talk about this somewhat, and I believe it's a ghost story. They might have compared it to the Amityville Horror, or maybe it has some kind of connection, which I read that when I was a young teenager. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what this is about. One cool thing, though, is I heard this book glows in the dark. So I'll, I'll find out. Oh, okay, my last maybe. I read this book last year or the year before, uh, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. So I've already read it, but I feel like before I read Words of Radiance, which I got them in this edition too, and they're beautiful. Before I read that, I want to um, listen. So I ordered this audiobook from the library and it hasn't came in yet. So if it comes in, I will listen to it. So that way next month I can go into Words of Radiance with a fresh, a fresh mind of, of the story. So, all right, I think that's everything. Uh, we only got to see Mayfair. None of my other kitties, they, it must be nap time. I'm doing this at a video at a weird time. Anyway, I'd love to hear what everybody is reading in October, what they plan to read. If there's, if you guys are doing any readathons, um, Angie, I was watching her video earlier and she's doing a readathon that she was really excited about. So 
I'll link her channel down below because <laughs> I even forget what the title of. I'm not doing. I'm not doing any readathon. So, um, but yeah, I'll link it down below so that way, if you guys are interested, you can uh, check that out. So, anyway, I hope you guys have a great. We I say weekend. It's Sunday. It's my weekend. Um, also, yeah, this September's almost over. So anyway, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.